So let us go and configure the commands on on the switches one by one. So I'll go to switch one. I'll start with the switch one. In my case, switch one should be a server switch. So I'll go to config mode. Uh, VTP domain name CCI. Uh, VTP mode uh, server. It's, it says it's already server. VTP uh, VTP password not compulsory, but we can configure. VTP version 2. Now I'll come back to this uh, command, uh, VTP status command, once I configure everything on the remaining switches as well. So let's go to switch 2. On the switch 2, I'm going to configure VTP domain name CCI, uh, CCI capitals. Okay, and then uh, VTP domain name CCI. So now it's, it's CCI. Now there's one thing you need you observe here when, when I change this to CCI by default whenever you configure the trunk link uh, because it's going to an LO and whenever you configure the VTP here it's going to take the neighbor name automatically that's a default behavior and VTP mode I'm going to make it as a transparent VTP password is Cisco 123 I think and then VTP uh, VTP VTP version 2 so let me just take out this command domain name mismatch and trunk now to negotiation. Let me check the status of the messages CCI domain. Name. So no need to worry. Uh, I'll I'll just go to switch three and change the name. So and then go to config mode. VTP domain name is CCI. VTP mode. Uh, before I put this particular switch three into client mode. We need to configure the passwords because once we change to client, it will not allow you to make much changes. So now I'm going to make it as a client. So show VTP status. Uh, let us verify this status command later on. Now the first thing uh, we we just finished the configuration of trunking. We did that, and also the VTP. Also we are done with that. So let's go to switch 1 and create the VLANs. So on the switch 1, I'm going to create a VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and VLAN 30. And I should see the same VLANs on the switch 3. So let's go to switch 3 and verify this VLAN information by using a show VLAN command. You can see the VLANs are created on the switch 1. And I can see them on the switch 1 anyway because they are locally created. But I can see them on the switch 3 also because it's a client mode and and for this configurations remember well, there's one thing you need to keep in mind the domain name the password and the version has to match in order to have a proper synchronization of the VLAN information so if there's a mismatch then you may not see this uh, VTP working properly so let's go to switch 2 and on switch 2 if I give show VLAN I should not see them on the switch 2 because switch 2 is a transparent mode and the transparent mode will not uh, synchronize or give uh, will not accept the information or not it will give the information so let's create some some vlans on transparent mode so i'm going to create the vlan 200 300 uh, 100 200 300 on the switch 2 now I should not see them on the switch one or switch two, right? Switch one. Let's let's go to switch one and verify the same on the switch one. So I, I don't see the 100, 100, 200, 200 VLANs because the transparent will not give or take. The same thing. What whatever we have uh, we have discussed in the previous section. Now there are some more verification commands we can use. Uh, let us let us verify some some of the specific show commands. Show VTP status is the uh, show VTP password is the first command which I generally use for verifying the password, ensuring that the password must be same on all the switches. If the VTP is not synchronizing, then this is the first command we need to check, and then we need to we, we use show VTP status commands. Now the status command is going to show you some more information like the current version which we are using, and there is something called configuration register file. So sorry, configuration register revision number, not register file, it's a revision number. Now the default revision number will be zero, and every time you make some changes, it is going to increment 
based on the changes. So let us verify this. Right now on the switch one, the revision number is five. So I'm going to create some VLAN, two VLANs, VLAN 40 and VLAN 50. And then I'm going to remove one more VLAN, VLAN 10. And then I'm going to VLAN 20 and I'm making some changes. So total how many changes I did here? Uh, I made some two changes on creating the VLANs and the third change I made by removing the VLANs and the fourth change I made by changing the name. So I did all the three things, creating, modifying and deleting. Now I should see what, what number I should expect here now. So show VDP status. I should see the revision number as 9 because when you make four changes, the revision number from 5, it is going to change to 9 because of the four changes. So that's what this revision number is going to tell the latest updated information and then you'll see some options here VTP operating mode is server and then the domain name is CCI and pruning option we'll be discussing in our next videos and then MD5 digest value this is something based on the password okay and then who has updated nothing but it will show you the server IP address right now we don't have any IP addresses configured for the switches uh, in case if there is an IP address, it's going to show you the IP address of that particular server uh, interface IP address, any VLAN IP normally. So the next thing uh, we need to know, you can see the domain name has to match. This all information you can verify with this command. Now uh, revision number is something which is very important for you to know. And if you if you go and check the same thing on the switch 2 which is our transparent switch so the default revision number for the transparent switch will be always zero and even if you add any number of vlans it will remain zero all the time and that is your transparent switch the revision number by default it will be always zero and it will not increment at all whether you add the vlan or modify or delete any vlan informations now there is one thing we need to keep in mind when you are adding any new switch to the production network regarding this VLAN, VLAN thing. So revision number is like an index, is used as index for VTP revision number. So VTP messages when they are sent, so if, if a client realizes that the server is having higher revision number, so it is going to synchronize the VLAN information automatically and change the revision number back to 9. Okay. So based on this revision number it is going to uh, keep the track of any changes happen in your network now uh, there is one thing we need to keep in mind when you are adding any new switch uh, press, let's take an example in my production network this is my production network I got a current revision number in my production network is 55 and and there is there is one switch which which is down here this switch now right now this particular switch is down and what I did I replaced this switch with a new switch maybe I added a new switch here uh, I got one switch in the storeroom I got a switch which is added here and now I did not verify that particular switch and in that particular switch uh, it is something used by my my engineers or maybe uh, that particular switch is used for testing purpose and right now it is a it is little bit emergency to add a new switch so my one of my junior engineer who is not much aware of these con things um, did not realize or did not know that uh, the revision number on this particular switch is something around 100 and he connected that particular switch and he and he configured some trunking and then he configured some VTP kind of stuff and once you do this what happens so all the switches in your network will come now this particular switch is having some dummy VLANs which we are not using at all in our production network and this which is having a valid junior VLANs which are used in our production network now whenever you connect this particular switch all the switches will realize that there is an updated information based on the revision number and they all will come to the switch and they will update their own VLAN database by removing the VLANs whatever present in the production network by adding all your dummy VLANs and changing the revision number back to 100 now this is something you may come across in the production network uh, so there, when, when you are using VTP there is one important point we need to keep in mind that adding a new switch into the existing VTP domain uh, is really important but at the same time we need to ensure that when we add this new switch we need to ensure that revision number should be zero 
and we should we want our switch to delete all the VLAN information if it is already present so that your VLANs which we are not using should not replace the existing VLANs so this scenario can definitely affect your network and it can make your all the VLAN users not able to access the resources because of this small issue where a, a, a switch which is a switch which is which has been replaced by some some old switch and we did not realize that it is having a higher revision number than what we use in the production network so that's the reason anyway if you have some issue with with the switch definitely i'm going to replace that with a switch maybe i'm replacing with a storeroom switch whatever i discussed but before you add that into the production network we need to ensure that we change the revision number to zero because even though it is 100 100 here so in my production network it is 55 i need to ensure that i'm going to change the revision number from whatever the number it is to zero before i add that particular switch to to my production network now to make that possible what i can do is i can delete one file called vlan.tat file we need to delete this file so let me show you the procedure to do that so for verification what i'm doing is i'm going to disconnect this switch from the production network and i'm going to assume this assuming this is a storeroom switch which is already having a vtp number a revision number as nine assume that it is something more than nine because if i take a new switch here it's going to show me the revision number zero and i don't want that now what i want exactly here is i want to connect this switch which is in the storeroom to my production network but before i connect i want to ensure that the revision number should go to zero before i do that now to make the revision number zero we need to we need to just delete one file inside the flash if you show flash you will find one file here vlan.dat file now this vlan.dat file is the file which is going to store your vlan information and the vtp information everything in that so even if you verify show running config you should not see any of the vlan information in the running config because it is stored in the separate file called vlan.dat now we need to delete that file so we need to say delete uh, I think it has to be in the delete vlan.dat uh, there is no vlan.dat file vlan.dat so vlan dot so I'm going to delete this file vlan.dat and then we delete this file I think it, it has to be in a small letter so vlan.dat and then it's asking confirmation now if you verify show flash don't delete the flash or any iOS and then we need to reload the device okay if you want to erase the startup config you can erase if you want to lose all the configurations but I don't want so I'm going to just reload the device that's it so this way what we can do is we can but ensure that when you are doing this your switch is not connected to your production network because if you do that in the production network connection your vtp will synchronize in a very less time so uh, we don't want that now for verification we can use show up vtp status and the revision number right now it is zero and what i can do is now now i can configure this particular switch as vtp mode or vtp domain name ccie whatever i'm using and vtp password is cisco123 and then vtp version 2 and vtp mode client and then now and then i'm going to configure the link which is uh, which i'm going to connect port number 21 switch port mode trunk uh, switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q and switch port mode trunk and then i'm going to connect a port number 21 which i already configured as a trunk to the switch now once you do this now the interface comes back to up and if you verify show VTP status, you can see uh, my switch is uh, synchronizing the VLAN information from the server because the domain name, all, all those things matches. And if I verify show VLAN, you can see the VLAN information is synchronized uh, between the server and the client. Okay. So these are the a few things we need to keep in mind when you are uh, troubleshooting your networks. 
when you're adding any new switch in the VTP domain, ensure that that revision number is not zero. Uh, is zero. Uh, and for that, we need to delete this file and then reload the device. So this is one method, or we can even change the domain name to some other name, like from the CCI, I can change to some, some name, like um, some name CCC, and then I can change back to this one. That is also one, one more way to do that. Or even you can change this particular switch to transparent because when you change to transparent, transparent will have the region number of zero and then back to client or whatever the mode. There is one more method to, to, to remove all the information or change the region number back to zero. But in this cases, it's not going to remove that VLAN information. It's going to just modify that VLAN DAT file. So if you want to delete and start up with the new configurations, then uh, we, we generally prefer to use VLAN.dat method.